Welcome to Straight Out of Savannah, Talking with Tammy, a podcast that showcases people you may not know who are choosing to use their gifts to inspire and move the planet. Thank you so much for joining us on Straight Out of Savannah. I am so excited to have my guest, Lauren Najjar, join me. She's going to share a little bit about who she is and what it is that she does. So Lauren, take it away. Thank you so much, Tammy, for having me. It's so great to be here. I am Lauren Najjar, and I am a business coach. I also have my own done-for-you agency, so we support coaches and small businesses um, on both ends of the spectrum. So I can help you and consult with you and coach with you into growing your business. Then I can also do done for you services for you as well. So social media management, regeneration, things like that. I'm definitely multi-passionate. So that's something that um, that's something that I've had my whole life. And I like to do a lot of things. I used to think of myself, Jack of all trades or you know, you, you're good at a lot of things, but you're not, you're a master of none. So that's, that's basically what my background is. And that's where, you know, my upbringing has been my whole life. And um, yeah, I live in Chicago or I live in the outskirts of Chicago. I should say I live in the suburbs. It's easier just to say I live in and around Chicago. I live in Northwest Indiana. Technically I have been running this business for four years, probably this month. Um, wow. I think that's coming up in a couple of days, actually. <laughs> so well, happy like, anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> my uh my coaching business has been four years. I've had the agency side of my business now for about a year and a half. Oh, nice, nice. And what made you decide to do the agency side? Definitely going back to my multi-passionate personality. I I really appreciate coaching and I like helping people and guiding them to their answers. But what I found through some of the clients that I had is, you know, I think, I think initially when I was taught how to coach, you know, definitely when it comes to traditional coaching is you're leading them to answers, you help them find the answers. But I also feel like there's definitely room And, um, I know for me, I love strategy and I love planning and I love brainstorming. And so I definitely have always coached in that way where I'm definitely more hands-on than somebody just to guide you. So I definitely like to be more hands-on with my clients. And I started to realize that I'm like, well, it's my business. Why can't I do this? Yes. So I decided that I'm going to support people in both ways. And so they can basically pick their path when they come to me. Um, you know, a lot of businesses that are solopreneurs, I would say, yeah, definitely yeah. need the coaching first um, to establish some systems and processes and things like that. But then I also like to um, help people, you know, a lot of times they've already had teams or they've worked with agencies and haven't really had great experiences or they are ready to outsource. And so that's when I can come in. Um, But I always, whenever I do have a coaching client and, you know, they're asking me questions or, you know, we have a sales call or something, I definitely always say I'm more hands-on. So I'm, I'm like, I'm definitely the type of coach that will ask you questions and dig deeper, mm-hmm. but I'm also there for you. I will review your content and will review all your stuff. So I like to be hands-on. I like, and I think that's the that kind of balances out my multi-passionate. Like I definitely like to be hands-on, but I also like to help people like find their own potential and maximize their potential too. Yes. Yes. So when you decided to do this, because this is something that I'm interested in um, because I feel the same way like you. I, I don't, I can't just do one thing. It just doesn't work for me. Yeah. I get bored and I have to yep. do different things. And that's, I laugh. I said, I, I think about it now. I realize that that was the reason why for me, I can't be working for people and I can't keep jobs. You know, I mean, like, okay, I'm going to put it like this. 
like I've always had jobs and I still have a part-time job now. Well, anyway, but, um, and I've always had them, but I've never been able to just commit and stay with one place for longer than the longest I've stayed anywhere was 10 years. And when I stayed there, I floated in different places and different departments, different floors, different, you know, I just, it's just hard for me. And I, I always thought about that. But when you talk to people that are in the coaching industry, especially here, they they always want you just to do one thing. Mm-hmm. You know, they want you just to, oh, you got to just, just niche down and, you know, to this one thing and you just have to do this one thing, you know? So yeah. how do you, how do you share with people um, about how to um, engage all of your passions? You know, how do you, how do you share with people that? Because, you know, you being that person, mm-hmm. you can talk to people and share, you know, hey, you know, you don't have to do it that way. Just because, you know, such and such a guru says that it has to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you deal with that? I'm smiling because some of the words that you're saying, just like, it's literally like a fire within me because I feel like that piece of well the gurus are saying this so I have to do it this way but I don't want to do it this way why do I have to do it this way and that is like the central focus of pretty much my life (laughs) like I and I I don't want to I don't want to tell a long story but long story short is my my entire life I felt a little different and Mm -hmm. in the sense of you know, I definitely wasn't the one with the pink hair in high school. I, I definitely fit in. I, I played softball. I was, you know, I was, I, you know, on the surface, a very normal looking person. You know, I didn't have, I wasn't wearing the spikes. It wasn't punk rock. I wasn't a bad yes. student, anything like that. But inside. I, inside and what my path in life was not traditional to, I didn't want a traditional path, I should say. And so from the day I started college, I wanted to work for myself. And so I actually started with a finance degree and I wanted to be, become a day trader. And then I wanted to figure out how to start my own eBay business. And I did that for a while. And I always wanted to find something that I, and I don't know if it was ever about working for myself, but it was just something where I could make money And back then being in my early twenties and late teens was money was bought, was going to buy me happiness. And that's what I thought. Um, I, I did go through, um, I went, I had cancer twice and then both my parents passed away within a span of five years. Oh, wow, girl. (laughs) So not to make the story so long, but, but in my, I was, my mom passed away when I was 21. My dad passed away when I was 23. And then I was diagnosed with cancer the first time right before my 24th birthday. Um, and then I was, and then I relapsed about a year later. So in a span of five years, you know, all of those things happening one after another kind of changed that mindset for me of, well, now I really need to find something that I'm fulfilled with. Um, you know, life is short, obviously that was, I was slapped in the face with that four different times. For sure. Um, and so like, uh, after all of that, of course, and even, even still to this day, like, you know, I, I will be, um, cancer free 10 years in January. Oh, and nice. so even like, it's been 10 years since that. And so like, I'm still learning these lessons, but I will say, that as I continued on this journey to find what works for me, like I, I found what works for me, I guess. And that's the biggest thing is that so many people have told me, you know, and I, and I grow up, I grew up in a small, I wouldn't say small town. There's definitely a lot of people, but we're, we're in the suburbs of Chicago. We're not in a city. And so traditionally everyone here wants to go to college find a job get married have kids buy a house and i'm lucky enough that i met my husband to where he also doesn't see life in a traditional sense and so while we you know got together we got married we actually sold our house to move to a city and live in a one-bedroom apartment 
and we've been married six years and we haven't had children yet. That's just not something that we've wanted up until this point. And so to many people around me in my life, pretty much every single person that's backwards, you know, right. like that's not traditional. And so right. that is just another example of you have to find what works for you and what you want out of life. And yes. you don't necessarily need to go through the things that I went through to, yes. to find that, right? Like you don't need a story. You don't need cancer or anything like that. Well, you know, but, the, but we all have one. Yeah, exactly. Everyone think, has a story. Everyone has I think sometimes thing. we just need to connect with it is what we need yep. to do, you know, in order to, to move forward, especially in, in business, um, in life as well. Mm -hmm. You know, once we connect with it, you know, because the thing is, is everybody has one yep. at some point, you know? Yeah. Everyone has a story. And that's another thing I tell my clients too, is I think that's a big struggle with a lot of people who want to build a business is they feel like they don't have a story because yes. they have done something dramatic or experienced something traumatic and right. And you, and that's you don't have to do that you know like you don't have to feel those things like there's still some elements of your life that will inspire people or situations that you've been through that yes. maybe you take for granted um but yeah so that's definitely where I come from as far as like you know I think I think at the end of the day that's what we have to figure out is like life is too short and you only get one shot at this and unfortunately you know, it's, I feel like then a lot of people think it's too late in life. So, you know, we run into that as well, Yes. Um, where you want to start that business or you want to find your passion and, you know, you're in your fifties or sixties or seventies and you feel like it's too late. And yeah. I am the, I am the person on this earth to tell you that, no, please do it now. Like, please yes. do it now. Yes. I, I feel that because I actually have had that challenge because I felt like, you know, it was too late because I've yeah. already, you know, I'm in my fifties and I was like, oh my God, you know, and I started looking at examples. Like I started seeing Louise Hay and I started yeah. seeing uh, the Kentucky Fried Chicken Man, you yeah. know, and I started seeing the McDonald's, you know, all these people that, you know, finally got their lick at a certain age, you know, started looking at some of the actors like, um, what's his name that used to do the electric company Morgan Freeman yep you know he was like old old by the time he actually you know took off Made it, before, yeah. you know he was in the damn electric company I remember that you you yeah would have been before your time but you, I'm sure you've heard yeah but um yeah I remember that because I remember him on the electric <laughs> yeah there's there's so many examples right and so once you start looking and you start seeing because I think that is really the thing it's like you know, you don't, you don't see it because you're not looking for that. Exactly. You know, and you're not, you're not at that place because even, um, my, um, my workout lady that I follow, Ernestine Shepard, you know, she's like 85 years old, but she's cut up and, you know, look like a, a brick house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think about that because she even said that, she didn't start working out until she was in her fifties. She says she heard somebody died or something and she got a wake up call and she started working out and taking care of her body and stuff, but she was in her fifties when she started. Wow. So, you know, so, so that kind of thing for me is like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. But you're right. People feel like they have to go through a lot and like, they have to have this huge ass story you know like your story or like my story I went across the country by myself and all this crap and you know people feel like they need that yeah but they don't really need that do they they do not you know I think it's really it's hard right it's easier said than done yeah when you are either embarking on a new journey and right. you're looking to the experts for guidance and mm -hmm. people are constantly telling you you know, how to do things. I, I guess, I, I don't think I've ever, I don't think, I think I've always been this way where I like to take little bits of in pieces from everybody. I think yes. maybe that's just my learning style. And, right. and I, and I don't, 
was through my parents. And, and I know that my mom always kind of told me um, that I was very independent and kind of always reinforced that for me, mm-hmm. you know, to be independent. And so maybe that's a little part of this, but I feel that if you, if you truly want to do something on your own or, or embark on a journey or do things your own way, and even if you don't at this point, maybe this is new that you're listening to, and this is something that you've never heard of. It's it, that is yes. the best way. And like, I think like if anybody telling you that finding your own way is the best way, those are the people that you need to listen to because yes. you can't, you can't build a business and you can't do whatever it is and copy and paste from other people, you know, say that <laughs> to, louder for the people in the back. <laughs> because that is what we cannot be a copy of other people like what brings what's special and what your success special sauce is is you like and you might think that that's like well who you know again like that goes back to probably thinking that you don't have a story like who's gonna listen to me all of these things it's like I mean look at like you can just take a gander on Instagram and look at these people that people listen to. And you might even have some judgment in your mind. Like, how are people listening to this? It's like, okay, there you go. Look. If people can listen to that, <laughs> then people can listen to you. Like you probably have more interesting things to say. So that's, that's kind of, you know, I, I think that's always been an element to me and, and how I've like kind of gone forward is, well, if that person can do it, why can't I do this? Yes. Or if that person, you know, if that person is in Forbes, then I can get into Forbes. Or if that person is, um, you know, speaking on stage in front of 50 people, then I can do, why can't I do that too? And so that my whole thing is like, why not? Like, yes, why, I think that's just like unlimited potential. It's like, well, why not? Why can't you do the things you want to do? Like you are, whatever you're choosing, it's, what is that saying? It's like, whatever you're not doing, you're choosing. Yes. So yes. Like it's a hard truth to really kind of hear that. And so people will come up with excuses and justifications, but yes. you're choosing to be in a job that you hate, or you're choosing yes. to be in a relationship that you hate. And I understand. And that's hard. That's it hard. Is, it is hard. I mean, it really is a hard thing to, to realize that it's almost like, people talk about manifestation all the time. And I do because I talk about that. But um, the thing is, is we're always manifesting. Now, whether we're manifesting what we desire or we're manifesting the opposite of that, we're manifesting it and we, it's our responsibility. And I think that is hard for people to understand and deal with, well, not even understand, but hard for them to deal with because they feel like it should be somewhere, somebody else to blame. Yes. You know, we should be able to blame somebody else for that. Oh, we can blame, you know, our husband. We can blame our parents for how they raised us and how we grew up. We can blame society because society is so wrong and crazy and racist and this and that. And there's all kinds of things. But, you know, ultimately it's up to us to create, right? I felt that deep in my bones when you said that, like we want to blame other people. I, I think I went through... You know, I think naturally when you're growing up and you're young and you, and you can't do the things that you want to do. And so you blame your situation or you blame your parents and you blame yes. your upbringing. And so like, I definitely like growing up, I, I think it's just normal teenager kind of argumentative, smart ass kind of thing with my, with my mom, especially. And I really wanted to go away to school and she you know, absolutely didn't care that I I got accepted to these universities that I was wanted to go away at because all she cared about was that it would make me go into debt with student loans. And so I went to school locally, um, you know, still got a great education, still got a degree, but I was definitely, I was always just very bitter about that because I'm like, well, everyone's going away to school and I want to go away to school. And, you know, the universities away are better than what's here. And, for so long, I blamed that. And then for so long, I blamed, you know, it's, it's hard to take ownership of some of the things that happened to you. And, yes. and for so long, I blamed, 
Um, like the, I just always needed to find her, someone to blame or reasons to blame as to like why my parents passed away or how I yes. got cancer. And so that, those to me, because I always was passing the blame, I think the biggest lesson was for me is that I can't blame anything. And the biggest lesson is the type of cancer that I had is that there isn't a direct correlation to any cause. They do not know what causes Hodgkin's disease, Hodgkin's lymphoma. No, they sure don't. And they, and so I had that. And so it's not genetic. It's not from, you know, from anything. From smoking, not from eating bad, you know, right. it's a completely healthy 23 year old. So nothing you can blame. No one I can blame to this day. And so for years I've had to work on that. And so that just truly makes you feel like once you start taking ownership of the things that you can control, yes. that's the difference is yes. you can't control people outside of you. You yes. can't control how people think of you. No. What you can control is what you do in your actions. Yes. And what you present. Yep. Because, you know, we all present what we want to present. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know, some people present, you know, faces that are not real. And some people present things that are authentic, you know, yeah. such as the way you present. And um, that was one thing that I, I love about you. Um, I actually saw a live that you did and I don't remember, it's been a minute, but I saw a live that you did and I was like, I love that. I can't even remember what it was, <laughs> but it inspired me so. So I I started, I, I, I went and started stopping you. <laughs> I did I was talking I was like I gotta find out where she is because this is good man I wish I knew what live this was <laughs> I don't know it's been it was a long time ago but it yeah. was I found you and I was like wow you know and then um I got hacked so I oh, lost no. everybody yeah so so this is like a whole new page for me because you know I lost all my almost 5,000 people and so oh. now I'm starting over with that yeah. so that's why I was like I think I had to rejoin your group and all this kind of stuff and I was okay. like okay yeah but I I did I saw this live and you were so awesome and the thing I loved about it because to me now I do some long lives but not many I try really hard not to do that but I love the fact that your live was like 20 minutes long but it was packed full of information and I was like now I like that. And I don't know how she does that, but I'm going to keep, keep, keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Because it was like powerful. I mean, you, you, it's like you gave a power punch and you did it quickly. So, you know, everybody's attention was right there and then you were done. And that mm-hmm. me, that's perfect. That's how it should be done. Yeah. No fluff. We don't do no. fluff here. <laughs> no. We're straight and to he, the point. <laughs> no. And unless it's a master class or something, you know, I'm not really trying to watch a live that's two hours long. I can't do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, one hundred percent. And I, but that's me too. Is like I don't like. I can't. I, I'm not big on podcasts. I think in the last year I've been a little bit bigger on them, but I definitely am not the person to watch live videos. Like I'm just. I can't just sit still, and I think that's just me but I can listen to something. And so I will listen to a live video. I just won't look at the person or um, I'll listen to podcasts um, I do while a lot I'm of doing that. something else and or while I'm driving in the car or something, you know, yeah. like those are perfect or I'll be working out and listening to a podcast. So I like, but I like that. I like people who don't beat around the bush, but they do yes. it in a way where it's not like there's a difference. There's a difference when people are very loud and in your face. Well, and you don't feel rushed. You right. Know, it, it feels natural. Like, like you're having this amazing conversation and you're bringing value. That that's basically what it feels like to me when I watch you. Yeah. Well, so well, I, I love yeah, that's it. exactly how I, that's exactly what I want to do. I, I feel that talking to people, regardless of the relationship, right? Like I feel like a lot of times people hold back because, oh, you're not paying me or you're not um, my client or you're not in my inner circle. And that's something I see a lot in this industry or just, I guess, in general, like people are very clicky and I've, I've never been a part of a click in my whole life, (laughs) you know, like 
I, I can't tried. stand it. <laughs> like, you know, that's the thing. Like, when you're in high school, especially in the early 2000s, when I was in high school, like, every that's when popular. I guess there's always been popular groups, but I feel like there's always like the cheerleaders and then there's the popular partiers and then there was the athletes. And so I was, was, right. And I feel like I had friends all over and I, I had friends in each little group, but then I remember telling my mom one time, I'm like, I don't feel like anybody is stuck up in school. I could feel like everyone is nice. And I I'm kind of friends with people in each group. And she's like, well, maybe you're the stuck up one. And I'm like, well, no, I don't think that's true. Think so. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think because I was involved in so many different activities, you know, I played softball, but I wasn't the best athlete. You know, I, I played basketball, but I wasn't the best. So I had my friends, but I wasn't best friends with the best people, you know, the most popular athletes and most popular, you know, cheerleaders or things like that. And I, um, I've, I feel like I've always been like that because, you know, even when we were younger, you know, all summer long, I'd play, I'd be in sports and I'd have my sports friends, but then during the school year, I'd have my school friends. And so, I mean, I think that no matter, I guess like I've always had friends from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, all different areas, you know, from, um, you know, ages, old, young, I get along with pretty much everybody. And that's just how I've been. And I can talk to pretty much anyone. And, but, and, and I feel like a lot of times people have the gift of gab when it comes to selling and they use that to their advantage to take advantage of people. Yeah. I don't, I don't like that, or I don't know how to do that. I don't know if I could ever. It's, I'm not. And that's a good thing because you don't need exactly. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that I've always, I'm always interested in, in people's perspectives. I think that's the, my biggest thing too. So, you know, even if it's someone that I work with or I don't work with, I love to hear how things work, which, which is unfortunate because I think a lot of times people have abused those questions in the past where people are like, how is your business? And they use them to turn on you kind of, or steal your stuff. Yeah. Or steal your stuff, steal your ideas. But for me, I I just genuinely want to know. (laughs) I had a friend of mine, uh, reach out to me saying that exact same thing. She was crying. She was from across the pond. Well, she's from, she's from where you're at but she lives across the pond. She has for like 20 years or something. But she said that people actually stole her stuff. And I was like, she, cause she has like this, she has a particular way that she works with people and stuff. And so, and it was wild because when she said it, I actually had seen the person and she didn't even have to tell me who it was. I knew. I was like, oh my God, really? And And I had actually looked at that program. I wasn't going to do it, but I had looked at the program just to see, you know, what it was like. And and, uh, when she explained it, she was like, girl, that is my program. I was like, wow, that is scandalous. I I could never be that scandalous. No, and I don't know how people do it. That happens every day. How they sleep. Yeah. How they sleep. I don't know how, like, I'm very lucky, I guess, or grateful, I should say, lucky and grateful that nothing of mine has been stolen yet that I know of, because I know how prevalent it is. And I think that it happens to so many people, unfortunately. Yes. yes. And I guess it keeps the lawyers busy because you need to trademark your stuff then, but <laughs> it's just very sad. It is. It's, it's just, I mean, it's like, how do you sleep at night when you do that kind of thing? Yeah, small business owners, we all should be like supporting each other, you know, and and it's wild and it, it's so how do you feel? I, I gotta ask you this because you're you know a woman and we live in the states. Um, how do you feel about the Roe v. Wade thing? So I'm really sad. <laughs> um, and I guess there's so many different aspects to this. There's yes. so many different aspects to it, and there's so many different angles to it. It's a lot um, underneath it. Yep. And I can only talk about my, I will talk about my personal worry and, and being scared. And so, you know, I mentioned I had cancer. Um, and so when I was 20, right before I went through my second treatment, um, I had to freeze my eggs 
because they thought I was going to not be able to have children, be knocked into menopause with the chemo that I was going to get. And like I said, this is right before my second time. So I've already gone through radiation and chemo a full, full, you know, full time. And then I was about to go into chemo and do a bone marrow transplant with the second time. So I was very grateful that I had the opportunity to do that, um, not knowing what was going to happen, but needless to say, everything has been kind of normal, I should say. Normal, whatever, um, through tests (laughs) and everything. Normal as, as, you know, if you want to know my levels, I'll share them with you. But anyway, Yeah. (laughs) yeah, everything's normal. Mm-hmm. However, now I'm, I'm 35. Um, I have friends. Who, You're about to be geriatric. <laughs> well, and then as far as like all the other things I've experienced, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, I don't know my situation if I were to try, try to conceive. Right. And so one of those things is, you know, there's IVF and yeah. I actually live in a state, I live in Indiana um, actually Indiana just passed, they were the first state to just pass, um, like the first no abortion, um, law, but they are also one of the first states to have so many provisions. Like, you know, they will let abortion happen for rape and incest, um, complications to the mother. Like they have all the provisions that people have been wanting. Indiana has it. However, I was, you know, all, when all this stuff happened is, you know, IVF is underneath this umbrella. And so with IVF, um, you know, you fertilize the egg outside of the body right. and what I was reading in a lot of these States. And I don't think I'm, I'm not fully sure what Indiana's final decision was, but technically you're, if you fertilize all these eggs and you do IVF, they're going to make you carry those, make you carry all those eggs and take them to full pregnancies. And so a lot of times with IVF as well, they put multiple, um, eggs in you. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so a lot want of to see time, which one is going to be viable. right. And a lot of times some of those die and some of those don't succeed. Um, and so one of the all other things I read is a lot of times people would um, have abortions or need some sort of surgical process to get those eggs out, you know, if they didn't survive or whatever, um, you would actually have to carry that to term then in a state that didn't allow these kinds of procedures. So again, this is just what I've read. This is what I've experienced or so so it's true. So it's absolutely the truth. And so I, I worry, (laughs) like I worry for those things. Um, thankfully uh, my doctors and everything there in Chicago and Illinois is a like safe haven state. (laughs) Um, and I'm very, I'm very grateful, very lucky that I live so close. And so I will never go to any medical care in Indiana. And this was, this is a decision I made back when I had cancer the second time, but I, I will never I I think I'm grateful that I have a doctor and stuff established already in Chicago for these things. Um, but so that part scares me. That is so long, I guess, you know, I explained a lot, but (laughs) that's really, that's truly like when that happened, I don't think I've ever had, you know, there's been a lot of things that have happened the last few years that have really hit home, but Mm -hmm. I think like this one was the scariest one for me. Yes. Um, yes. Because, you know, we think that, okay, well, you know, I always think that I can do whatever I need to, you know, to, to help myself or to, you know, I have the financial resources or the insurance and you think that you're going to be okay. And then it's like, well, somebody's telling you that you can't like, yes, it's just very scary. How, Mm -hmm. how, what are your feelings towards it? Uh, I think that we slept and they snuck it in there. Yeah. I think we slept and they snuck it because we just couldn't believe that it could be done. Yes. Because all these years and all this this, uh, forward progress and all the people and all the women that marched and died too, you know, for that cause and for us to be able to do that. And they've done this. Um. 
I heard something, but I have to tell you when we start recording. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it, I was like, wow, you know, when I heard it. And then I was like, you know what? And then when I sat with it, and then when I heard you speak, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. wow it is so right because now people are jumping up and down about it and you know now we want to do marches and all types of shit but that was we should have did that before exactly but I just truly believe that that we didn't believe that it right. was going to happen you know what I mean it's like mm -hmm. you know it's almost like every time they start saying, you know, the civil rights bill has to be renewed and all this stuff. Well, we just automatically assume that is going to be renewed, you yep. know, but then we, you know, so we don't consider or think about the systemic, systematic racism and sexism as well mm -hmm. that is built into this world. It's not even this country, it's the planet. It's built yep. in. And so we don't think about that or consider that when these things start coming up. You know, I think it, it's a grievous disservice to women. I really do. I, I, I'm not a person that, you know, is like, just run and get an abortion. But I'm a person right. that says the option should be available if that's something that you need to do. Because if you're raped, you know, and then the other thing is, I really don't believe that it should be like contraception. I don't believe that about abortion. I never have. I think that there's so much damn contraception out there. You need to get on some of it if you don't want to have no kids. Right. <laughs> you know, it's so much out there. I, I used to work in an OB clinic and I, my God, the things I saw, there's so many things you can do. Yeah. So I don't believe that should be used in that way. However, I say this um, because I always have said this. I have a daughter and if she was 12 and had gotten pregnant, somebody had raped her or something like that, we would have had to go get an abortion because I'm not we weren't doing that. She wasn't ready to raise a child and I wasn't raised it no more. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I I do feel like we should have that right, you know, that it should be available to us if that's something that we want to do. And I, I don't think that um, they should be able to govern that. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> as much as I love talking about this, we have to close it down now. So Lauren, tell the people how they can get in touch with you. And then if you have anything that you want to share or, you know, anything like that, just let them know. Okay. Well, I am pretty prevalent on Facebook and Instagram. You can just search me for, um, just with my name, Lauren Najar. I am both on Facebook, Instagram. I am also, uh, I do also have a Facebook group. It's called Slaying with Success. Very good. Um, yeah, thank you. And mm -hmm. it's it's been around for about four years now. So about the same time as my business. And and yeah, that, that's pretty much my my three areas you can find me. I I typically do live trainings every Thursday inside the group. So if you need help with your business, with growing, with marketing, with lead generation, those will be the topics that I talk about. Yes, yes. And her group is amazing, y'all. I'm a mm -hmm. part of it. I love it. I try to go in there and spend some time. <laughs> yeah. However, however, I am at this place where I have to, you know, I limit my social media. So people are are in my inbox going, um, are you going to respond or something like that? But I have had I have got to limit that stuff because you know you'll get sucked into it and just, you know, be scrolling and all that. And no. So at yeah. a certain point, you know, a certain time of day for me, I shut it down. I'm like, no, I don't even, I turn my phone down. Don't even look at it. Stop it. Because you, you know, you can get sucked in. Yes. I do everything with intention, especially signing into social media. Yes. yes like about that, six, six or 7 PM. I I'm not on it until about 9 AM the next day. So exactly. And that's, that's the thing. It's like, as soon as you find your sweet spot for that. So. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. This was amazing. Lauren is amazing. Um, she has amazing services and all of her details will be in the description of the video and the audio wherever you listen to or watch this. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been so much fun. And that is always, if you know me, you know that is my favorite word, fun. So go out and have a fun day. And if you are doing something that is changing the planet, make sure that you reach out to me so you can come on straight out of Savannah and talk about it. So thank you so much for joining us. Bye now.
I know you've been blown away with the amazing value here today. Now go out and inspire the planet. And be sure to send us a message when you're ready to come talk about it on Straight Out of Savannah, Talking with Tammy. This is Tammy, and I would love it if you would join me for my Healing Forward Masterclass. It is going to be so fabulous. We are going to have healing activation. It is going to be incredible. When you leave, you are going to feel like new money. So join me on my Healing Forward Masterclass at August 31st at 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Reach out to me and send me a message and let me know that you are interested and I will send you the link. It is only $37 for this healing activation masterclass. It's going to be phenomenal. You will feel like you are walking on the clouds when you finish. So thank you so much for that. And if you are interested in having your own personal healing session, reach out to me for that as well. So thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for listening to this amazing, amazing podcast. Bye now.